I'm just finishing off a presentation for a talk I'm doing this evening. Uh, thank you, Alison Hamilton. Um, on uh, to a group of people um, who've had breast cancer, and that being the case, I thought it relevant to cover something which people with cancer very often suffer from, i.e., hand foot syndrome. Um, this the technical name for it. Let me see if I can pronounce this right. Is palmar plantar erythrodysesthesia. Erythrodysesthesia. Um, and it is a side effect of chemotherapy. It's not actually the cancer that causes this, it's chemotherapy. Um, how likely you are to get it depends on which type of uh, chemotherapy you have. Um, but the, uh, the, one of the main culprits is the oral one, um, which is a side effect in over 50% of people. So anybody that is uh, taking oral capecitabine uh, is very likely to have that. Apparently this is the limiting factor for that particular form of the chemotherapy. This is uh, why you can only have so much of it. Um, and the mechanism for how it happens is not entirely clear. Um, we know that it is something to do with the chemotherapy drugs uh, escaping from the blood um, and out into the tissue, probably um, into the skin, um, into the dermis of the skin, uh, not the epidermis. Obviously, the dermis of the skin is by far the most interesting bit. Forget the epidermis. The epidermis is boring. The dermis is, uh, is where it's all at. Um, there's a few suggestions for how this works. Uh, there was a study uh, that showed quite a high concentration of these things in the uh, sweat glands and in the sweat um, or it has been suggested that um, the chemicals cause an inflammatory response, um, that you get a, a heightened inflammatory cytokine concentration in people with this problem. Um, either way, uh, the way to think of it in a sort of bumper sticker sense is that the, uh, the chemotherapy drugs get squeezed out of the capillaries um, and into the skin where they cause problems. Um, it affects mostly the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet, which of course are the areas with a nice high concentration of capillaries and also the areas that take most of the abuse. Um, it seems to be mostly on the weight-bearing areas of the foot that suffer, so the heels, the plantar metatarsal area, and somewhat under the toes. Um, the symptoms are not very nice. Uh, it usually kicks in after the second week of treatment from sort of day 11 onwards. Um, and it will start with numbness and tingling. It presents not unlike um, neuropathy. So uh, that would be more the, uh, the painful um, neuropathy flavor. Uh, you'll also get the paresthesia, a um, little bit of numbness sometimes. Um, and it can cause swelling. Uh, it can cause edema in the tissue, which of course um, fits with the whole inflammatory thing. Um, it can cause dryness and cracking of the skin and also callus. And this is most likely coming back to what we were talking about with callus in terms of um, increased keratinocyte turnover um, being a response to an inflammatory uh, reaction. Um, if you have an increased uh, inflammatory response because of the chemotherapy, then you will have faster keratinocyte transit and that will cause the, the moisture problems in the skin, the cracking of the skin and of course callus. Um, and you get some very characteristic erythema, the hot red skin where the capillaries get sort of jammed open um, and uh, you can see that on the middle picture there quite clearly. Uh, and in the extreme cases, pain, blistering and peeling of the skin. So this is where um, you get so much uh, increased transit that the skin is just not quality anymore. It's not patent. Um, and yes, it is on the areas where you get trauma and it is exacerbated by trauma. The treatment for it um, comes in two sort of categories, you could say, treating the cause and treating the symptoms. So in terms of the cause... Um, you want to avoid heat. Um, in particular, you want to avoid hot water because these, of course, will um, 
uh, cause vasodilation, cause capillaries to open up, increase the um, pressure within the capillaries, um, and therefore uh, increase the chance that the chemotherapy drug is expressed. So if you have a shower like this, um, you need to dial that down. Um, and of course, uh, be careful with the washing up. Um, basically, if you're on chemotherapy, you have a pass not to do the washing up. Um, avoid activities that will increase pressure specifically in those areas. So any heavy weight bearing activities or if it's in the hands using power tools, anything that vibrates, uh, anything like that. And obviously avoid tight shoes and avoid shoes that have very, very thin soles and shoes that put an awful lot of weight on the forefoot, viz heels. Um, and avoid firm massage. I know um, reflexology is a thing for people um, having chemotherapy, um, but very, very hard rubbing, of course, will um, increase the compression in the capillaries. So if you are going to have any kind of foot massage or anything like that, um, make sure it is exceedingly gentle. Um, so those are to try and avoid the sort of causes of the problem. Um, that being done, there are some things that you can do to help with the symptoms, which would be cooling soaks, ice packs, anything to cool the feet down. Um, so just a, a bowl of cold water probably would avoid too much ice, to be fair. Um, it's in the literature, but I don't like that idea very much. Um, but anything that will, uh, will keep the feet nice and cool. Uh, make sure the lining of the shoe is uh, soft and has a low friction cover. So uh, your sketches with a memory foam with a Lycra cover on it will be good. Um, soft insoles are great, but make sure that it doesn't cause the foot to get hotter because pour on can cause the foot to get quite hot and sweaty, um, which will be good for the pressure but bad for the capillaries. So try and avoid that if you can. Make sure the shoes are nice and cool. Avoid Wellington boots. Avoid very, very heavy hiking boots, that sort of thing. Again, Skechers um, sandals, if they're soft and conforming, can be good. Uh, make sure you've got a little bit of airflow there. Uh, and a, a good use of emollients. So uh, if there is callus, then you want a urea-based foot cream. Again, be careful with the concentration of the urea. Make sure you match it to where you are putting it. Um, do not put high dosage urea on thin skin on somebody with this because you will exacerbate the problem um, or just a, a nice emollient um, just something to uh, to keep the skin moist keep it supple um, there's good evidence that that helps the symptoms and of course good podiatric management um, sharp debridement uh, again considering the um, the video on the how to file a foot you don't want to be sore in a way at it with a file you don't want pressure or trauma on the skin uh, you want very light gentle touch so if you're going to use abrasives light pressure morse discs that sort of thing don't push hard um, uh, but sharp debridement is probably better uh, it's recommended that before people start a course of chemotherapy they have a good podiatry treatment um, and get all of the callus off of the skin so you've got a nice um, clean slate so to speak uh, and then obviously as the treatment is going on uh, it's helpful to um, make sure the callus is kept under control um, and that is all that you need to know about hand foot syndrome for people with chemotherapy